on page two, it was about conversions and getting results. Well, page one is about setting up these webmaster tools to be able to track this stuff, to be able to track uh, how much traffic I got and where I got the traffic and all that great information. So I'm gonna let's back up to the first part, page one. So in general, let me talk about it in general, then we'll get specific. Uh, so there's a section on Google Webmaster Tools, and then there's a section on Bing. We're going to set up Bing first because I think that's the easiest one to do, and then we'll set up Google. Because like I said, Bing has one login screen for you to set this up, and Google has two, and recently they've added even more. Uh, so the big idea is that each of these webmaster tools has links to like the official documentation. So on your own, you can click that first link under Bing. I'll just look at it very briefly. You can click that. Yeah, maybe open that. You can just look at it briefly. This is going to be all the instructions. This is the manual. What are we going to set up? How does it work? What does this do? What is this? What is that? So I put that link on the PDF. This is like the official manual of Bing to set up a site uh, to track my traffic to see what was effective and all of that. And it is a lot, a lot of little chapters to read through. So if you have nothing better to do, if you've got insomnia, you know, start reading this. It might help, or you know, curl up by the fireplace with a nice uh, wine, and then the this on your tablet and and read it. But uh, you can do that on your own. Here I say that Bing is a rival search engine, and one that is rising. It has its own advice to help webmasters rank well on their results page. You'll find that many of the same concepts apply to both search engines with minor variations. So we'll cover Bing first. And what we learn there will be very similar to what we do on Google. And as I said, Bing is, is increasing in market share. It was at one point, of course, at 0%. No one was using it. And now it's at about 25%, um, somewhere around there. So that's hundreds of millions of searches. Even though it's only 25% of traffic, it's got hundreds of millions of people searching. And we might say, well, we'll just stick with Bing. Uh, we'll just stick with Google because everyone knows it. Sure, but like I said, if you want to reach more people and you know the techniques, they're not extremely difficult to do. If you know the techniques, why not apply them to both of the search engines to get even more traffic? In the real world, you wouldn't say, well, no, I'm never going to put my ad on that radio station, or no, I'm not going to put my. Uh, add in this paper, it does help to be active and to target more people marketing in the real world as well as digitally. So the way we'll do this together in a moment is we need to uh, add and verify a site. Claim your website with Bing so that you can track traffic, get alerts, and advice. So we can create all of these accounts for free, then it'll be the the point of linking the account to the site. They can all be set up for free. It will then let you track all of the data. We have to verify the site. There's a section in there that talks about, or that needs a setup for a site map uh, using a WordPress plugin like WordPress SEO by Yoast. will do the hard work for you. If you'd like to create your own, refer to the documentation on that site. This is a very technical process, however. It's best left to a plugin. So let me make a note here about sitemaps. Sitemaps. A special file that lists all your pages, all your content on your site. It's a special file. It's written in a special code called XML. It's very technical. I that have been doing web design since like 2001, I wouldn't try to write this myself. I would use software. I would use a plugin that does it for me. Because it is complex, specially written. So what it is, it's a special file that lists all of your pages. What's useful about it is then uh, you submit it to the search engines. 
so it knows about your site and can better um, show it to searchers. I have this site uh, on a certain concept uh, and with certain content and I've got it all listed in a site map. I then um, submit it to Google or Bing and I can use the same file for Google or Bing. Then the search engine will analyze the file which then analyzes my site and then they, they know everything about my site. So when people search a keyword or a, long, a, a short or a long tail keyword, Google says we know the exact website that you're looking for because our site map then defines everything of our of our site. Yeah. Do you do that every time you update your, your site? That, that process of, of, uh, of uh, informing them? Not really. Uh, if you've got it set up in one of the modern ways, if you're using WordPress or some of the other modern things like Wix and such, the sitemap gets automatically generated every time you've got a new change, and the sitemap automatically gets submitted to the search engines. In the old days, however, if you're doing a plain old Dreamweaver or HTML site, then you have to do it manually, and it is pretty annoying and complex. But a modern website most likely will do it pretty automatically. So sitemaps. Best to use a plugin or have a modern website. This is just that it, to, to add the notes that in the old ways of writing the website by manually by code, that was the old days and that was hard to do. Now a plugin, which is often related to WordPress, there are plugins that will do this automatically. And these modern websites as well, Weebly and Squarespace, they make a sitemap. Once you set up the connection, then it's automatic. So, very useful tactic for improving your ranking. Because this explains everything of what your site is. Sitemap can be used for both search engines. In Bing, we will see that there's also a section called Link Additional Sites. Modern SEO is not just about what you do on your site. It's also about what you do outside your site. That's SEM. In short, this means your business should be active on social media sites. Bing provides a screen for you to add all your additional sites. So we've said it before. We'll put it in our notes again. SEO basically what you do on your site SEM what you do off your site so on your site keywords blogs you do off your site social media newsletters And it's important to cover both when, um, when you're trying to get traffic. This is, again, why would I cut off a source of traffic, which could then be a source of conversions, which could be sales? Why would I cut that off if I know how to do it? And it's not extremely difficult. Why, why would I not engage in it? And nowadays, we basically have to engage in SEM as well because, as I said, there's, there's a constant battle against the spammers. They... Um, they can set up these accounts and they can learn the techniques and they can abuse the techniques. So there's some techniques that are harder to abuse and therefore the search engine might give them more preference and if you're engaging in them the better. 
the unfortunate thing is that the search engines don't tell us this one definitely definitely helps you and this one definitely hurts you because again then the spammers would know and then the spammers would keep abusing the system so we need to sort of try everything that they're suggesting and then they will behind the scenes do the rankings okay so to actually start setting it up there's the direct link. You can click it, bing.com slash toolbox. It'll open your web browser. To set up webmaster tools, so you have to create an account. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that. To set up webmaster tools, We need to set up a free account and your site verify your site yes so when you said that if you have a you have to have Outlook or a hot. hotmail no um well i'll show i'll show it here but uh no you don't need to create a brand new Hotmail or Outlook account, you can use an existing account. When we do this on Gmail, I mean on Google, it'll be the same thing. You don't need a Gmail account. You can use an existing account, a Hotmail account. So that, that would be an extra thing to set up, so you don't really need to do it. You can use an existing email account. Okay, thanks. Well, that, that's up to you. Uh, I would recommend it to be easier. I have one, only one email, one thing to log in that's easier. But the reason why you might not use the same one is because you might want to separate your personal email from your business stuff. If you have a personal email, I mean a business email, yeah, use that business email to set up this business stuff. So you just figure out what's the best for you and um, it can be changed. So on this home page, it talks about what Bing Webmaster Tools is and why it's important and use case scenarios and all of that stuff. So notice it also says, sign up now and receive $100 search advertising credit from Bing Ads. So they will give you $100 to spend in Bing to advertise. You've, you might have heard of Google Pay Per Click. Well, that's the Google ad network in that I pay on Google to rank higher. Remember last week I talked about that, that I can pay $10 and I'll be a number one result. Then someone pays $20 and they're number one. So then I have to pay $30 and, and it goes back and forth. Well, they give you $100 here for signing up. Uh, see the terms and conditions. But here, then they would give you some money to start to advertise on Bing to rank higher. And to get the ball rolling in the beginning, I would think about these things to set up these accounts uh, and, and, and advertise a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to... Um, if, you, if you click Sign In or Sign Up, it's, it's going to be the same thing. Let's just say we click Sign In. And it asks, okay, uh, sign in with your Hotmail or your uh, Outlook. If you already have a Microsoft account, if you've got a Skype account or a Hotmail Outlook, you can just sign in with it. If it's personal, again, this is going to be set up with some email address. You can use personal or business, or you can create a separate one. It's up to you to decide. If I look at the create one, what happens is it says create uh, Microsoft accounts, uh, someone at example.com. So I could use Victor at gmail.com. I could use a Gmail address or a Yahoo address to set this up. That's fine. Or I could click down here, get a new address, and that would let me then create whatever at outlook.com or hotmail.com 
it doesn't matter what account you use as long as you have an account to 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 set this up with does it have to be an active account or can you just put a you might be able to put a fake one at the moment i haven't actually tried it there that's a good point you might be able to i don't I don't think it needs a verification, but maybe it does because of, of the problems of spam. But you could try it. To set up Webmaster Tools, you need to set up a free account, verify your site. I'll also say you need you need an email address, either an existing one or one you create spot so I already have an account I'm simply gonna sign in but let me let me pause for a little moment for for you to either sign in with an existing account or set up an account once we've set up, once we've gotten inside the account, uh, then we'll see what we do with it. So let me just pause two minutes, sign in, and then we'll go on. So let me give you an overview of what we're looking at here. Uh, Bing Webmaster Tools, similar to Google Analytics, is going to give you data about your website. In general here, I, I logged in. I have nothing to look at here, but eventually there will be data. There's also their recent blog posts. Uh, Bing here is, you know, this is straight from the company. This is the, the company's official channel where you can read up Bing Ads fact check label in the search engine results page to support the claim review markup. Well, I don't know what that means. I'm going to click it and read it. And then I'm going to find out, oh, this is about uh, you know, trying to combat spam and fake news and all of that. So I would, uh, I would read about that. Bing refines its copyright removal process. So. Bing is trying to help out in copyright infringement that if your copyrighted content has been stolen and, and it's showing up there, there's a process to help remove that. So there is a blog there about um, being a webmaster and search in general. Um, so I would, read, I would read those blogs. And remember, on my PDF, I have a link over to the to the official documentation to read the whole thing about every single thing about how Bing works. But what I get when I log in here, I have various options on the top right, like messages and such. 
So the search, uh, the, yeah, the search engine, the webmaster tools, will tell you if there's trouble on your site, if there is a virus on your site, if there's like improvements that you can make on your site to further optimize. And again, all for free. The search engine will help you out to be a good site, a good webmaster to get traffic for free. The catch is you have to set it up, and that's what we'll talk about here. So I'll go in general about how to do it, then we'll do our, uh, our, our break sort of for you to try to do it yourself. So notice we've got this data here, which is empty, until we add our site. So we can either, either add it here or there. But eventually, this will show me my site, a little preview of it, if I've got any messages for a particular site. And I can have more than one site set up in this. I can have 50 websites. And I can track all of the data in this one dashboard if I want. Um, I will see how many clicks from search. So when people search in Bing and they see my website, if they clicked it, it will show up there. And I'll be able to see the deep data about who clicked and all of that. So they will, it will show me here the impressions and the conversions. They're counting it as people saw your site in the SERP search engine result page for Bing. They will see your site, and it will then count how many clicks, which is the conversion. It will then also count here pages crawled and pages indexed. So this is again about, uh, I want the search engine to know about my site. I want it to um, know everything that's on my site so that people can uh, find what they're looking for. So the search engines, Bing and Google, have to crawl or browse your website. They see your home page. They see a link. They follow that link on your page and look at something else, the About page. They see another link on the About page back to Contact page. They go to Contact page. It's crawling your site. Page is crawled. It tells you how many pages it found. And then page is indexed. The index is the big database of data that it's gathering. Bing and Google are, are running 24 hours a day trying to gather all of the information of the world in the, on the internet and have a catalog of it, an index of it, so that when you search, it checks its index, it found those keywords on your site, your site could show up. So we'll see all of this data in general and in detail uh, after we set it up, but we'll write a few notes right here. Just to explain those links uh, in the dashboard, we have messages, clicks from search, appeared in search, pages crawled, pages indexed. Messages, those are the updates about the health of your site. For suggestions, for improvements. Clicks from search, this is conversions. many clicks in the time period. Let me make a note down here about time period. Come back to that in a moment. So it's conversions. Clicks from search is the conversions. Period in search, impressions. How many appear how many times appeared? in the SERP, the search engine results page. Pages crawled. How many pages they found on your site. Uh, this could be based on your sitemap. 
if we if we provide them with a site map it will crawl your site more efficiently and faster if we don't provide a site map it will eventually crawl your website and then pages indexed how many new or relevant pages are added to their database whenever you do a search on any of these search engines it checks its database it finds what it's what you're looking for it shows you that so if your content has been indexed by the search engines that's how it can help um, display you so it'll find and store information about new or relevant pages from your site onto their database the webmaster tools work best the sooner you set them up so the longer they are set up data is gathered the more data you have the better decisions you can make knowledge is power goes the saying right so these webmaster tools are all about knowledge giving you lots of knowledge about your website to give you the power to do something about it I see that at a certain day of the week my site is more popular so I'll take advantage of that to maybe put promotions on my website on that day when I know I'm getting more eyeballs to get more results there I might see I'm getting a lot of traffic uh, from a city I didn't expect uh, one of our clients they had a restaurant in Chula Vista they then opened one in a new branch in Los Angeles and I saw the data that there was you know no traffic really coming from LA and then it was increasing 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 and now basically all the traffic that comes to the website comes from Los Angeles compared to the San Diego branch so that's interesting because then we can decide to hold more promotions or run social media campaigns and such that focus on Los Angeles maybe for two to one or three to one content that focus on the, uh, focuses on the LA demographic as opposed to the SD demographic again knowledge is power the longer I have this set up I can go back and see data from the past the default I believe is one month of data but then I can say show me three months of data six months twelve months two years show me in one whole year how my site has has fared has my traffic increased or decreased in general? Where has the average of my traffic come from? How long have people spent on my site? It's increasing. Those are the markers that tell you how you're succeeding or not. But the thing is, it won't go back in time to tell you how your site was last month if you set it up this month for the first time. So the sooner that can be set up, the better. Okay, let's see how we can uh, start the ball rolling to set this up. Let's say I'll click Add Your Site. It asks for two things at the moment. Your URL, your web address, required. Your site map, not required at this point because you probably don't know what it is, but I would add it as soon as possible. So I'm going to make this up. I can make this up fake just to show you. So let's say I'm going to add pictures bakery san diego dot biz i don't believe that exists but this is going to be the address to my website any publicly accessible website will work here you know any website online basically and again well what's to stop me from setting up google.com i want to see their traffic it doesn't make sense but let's say i wanted to see what's the traffic for for our college here we're not going to be able to see that because on the next screen for verification we won't be able to verify 
eventually, once I set it up where I know where the address is, I can add this. But oftentimes, um, this will look something like this. The sitemap will be some special file that your site is generating. Oftentimes, sitemap.xml. And we tell the search engine, Google and or Bing, here's where my sitemap is. Look at here. Look here first before crawling my site to find all the content of my site. Let's say I don't know what it is. I, I don't know if it's set up. I don't know what the link is. I'll just leave it as is. When do you receive the most traffic to the site? In your local time of the day. So the reason for that is to help Bing optimize its crawl behavior for your site, you can tell us when your site receives the most traffic. We will generally try to crawl your pages less during that time that you have more visitors. And this can be changed. <coughs> so Bing and Google are going to check in on your website once in a while. Therefore, they're going to generate traffic to your site. Traffic that goes to your site, in technical terms, slows down your site. So if I'm getting 1,000 hits per day, that's going to slow down my site, as opposed to getting 10 hits per day. So if part of the traffic is from the search engine themselves, the search engine is going to slow down your site some amount. I don't know how much. No one really knows. But it's saying here, if you know when the most popular time for people to visit your site is, we will not crawl or slow down your site during those times. I don't know when my most popular time is, so I have to leave the default. But if the most popular time when people visit my site is 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. local time, then Bing or Google will not visit my site during those times and slow down my site. I wouldn't set this if I don't know what it is, and you will be able to find this out eventually as you set it up. So it is a good idea to leave it to all day, and it will do its thing when it shouldn't be intrusive. I'll just click Add. And we have this complicated looking screen here. Verify. This is how I am prevented from setting it up for my competitor and spying on their traffic, or my competitor doing that to me. So I'll talk about it in general, the possibilities, and then we can then we can take a break to actually try it. We've got option one: upload or place an XML file on your web server. There is a specially generated Bing site auth.html file with special credentials. Every one's is different, but it's saying you're going to download this file and you're going to then upload it to your site. But this is different than, let's say you're using WordPress. You don't upload it in WordPress. You upload it in your server, in your, in your file manager, or using FTP, or using whatever system you have to upload directly to your server, which is where your website exists. And it's going to expect it, Bing is going to expect to find it on your website, slash bingsiteauth.xml. Once it's there, I would then click so I would click verify. That's one possible way to verify an, an address, to verify a site. Option one, upload your unique file to your server. Your server often times requires a different password than your your site's login. If I have a WordPress, I have a certain login to edit my site. I have a different login to the server. That's the that's the computer where that's the computer connected to the internet where my files are at for people to see my site. often use your provider's 
file manager or a third party app. And that's known as FTP, File Transfer Protocol. An app that I use with my login information to connect to the server to upload the file or my provider's file manager. I maybe I bought my website from Bluehost. That's my provider. I pay I'm paying Bluehost to have my site on the on their server. So I log into Bluehost. I then go to the file manager. I upload this file to where? To the server. Multiple folders. A server could have multiple folders, yeah. Most likely public HTML, yeah, because it needs to be visible by by Bing. And it says it says up here, your your file should be visible to the public. So most likely you're uploading it to your public HTML, yeah. So any way that a person can do this, they need to upload it to their server. Upload your unique file to the server, then return to Bing. And then return to the webmaster tools to click verify. So again, we'll do this together in a moment if if, if people need help. But that's one possibility, and we would do the same thing over on on Google when we get to that. The other option, option two, it says here. Copy and paste a meta tag into your default web page. You can add a meta tag containing the authentication code here in the head section of your default web page. Example, and then there's code. Okay, so here's another way to do it, but this is also technical, like the first one. All of these ways are a little technical to do. But that's why we have the time for a little one on one if you need the help. So this is saying you're going to copy this line of code and paste it into the code of your website. Every website is made out of code. Here's the code of this website. I can view the code, but I can't edit their code. I'm clicking to edit. I can't edit someone else's website code. If I have the, act, the ability to log into the site, then I can edit the code. And so what it's telling you is, you log into your site, you go into the, the, the screen where you can edit your code, and you copy and paste this line of code into where it's telling you in the head section. There's a section of HTML, head, body, etc. And you can see that right there. I'm looking at the code of Bing. I see head. I see HTML. I see head. If I had access to this, I would copy and paste that code that it's telling me right there on line 7. And then I would verify that I have access to the site. So for our notes here, yes? All right. Is that going to in the future, is that going to be the way that people remodel websites? It looks very involved, as opposed to more graphic-based uh, drag and drop. Uh, no, it's cyclical. That was the first way that it was done. The first way that it was done was writing the code. Oh. And now it's not, that's not common as or as common anymore. Or? It's gone in cycles because it used to be that the, the only way to make a website was to write that code. Then software came out that was very graphical, like Dreamweaver, WordPress, etc. And now it's kind of also coming a, a little bit back because you can do a lot of power moves, power techniques in the code that you can't do from something like WordPress or Dreamweaver and such. So some web designers, webmasters, they do the traditional coding way, which is very complex, but it can do special things. But a lot of us regular people were using the, you know, the safer WordPress, Weebly, Wix, and all of that. But WordPress and, and, and Squarespace and all of that still let you edit the code if you go to the right screen. They just kind of hide it from us because it can be complex and it can break your whole site. It's like popping the hood of your car and messing around in there if you don't know what you're doing. Looking at the code of a website is, look, is doing that exactly. You know, oh, what is it? What what happens if I if I delete this line right here? You're gonna break your site probably. So, this method has always been there since day one, 
but now it's been we get shielded from it most of the time but if you're advanced and you need to do advanced things it's still there and I know like when I do this for clients I oftentimes am in this part of the code instead of a safer sort of interface because I need to do power user techniques so this option two in the code view of your website the home page in the head block of the code copy and paste the unique code you are given into it so Bing is giving me a unique code, a unique identifier. I need to copy it from Bing. I need to log into my site. I need to go to the code view and paste it. Then I return to Bing and click Verify. We only have to do this one of these options, not all of them, just one of them. Victor, is it just the one line of code, or was it from the head? Down just the one line. This line right here, this one separated. Oh, I see. Not in the, um, the body of it. No, you don't copy this because this is going to duplicate a website inside your website. Oh. Anything that has a body is a new website. Okay. You're going to put a website in your website. You just want that line, which the example is put it in the head, somewhere in the head. Okay. There is a third option which I wouldn't even bother with. I've done this for years, and I wouldn't even try this method also one or two. The third one is add a CNAME alias record so your DNS provider will resolve that. Easy, right? <laughs> well, what this is saying is you need to make like some very, very deep changes to your server. Your server is where your website lives. That's again like, you know, popping the hood of your car it's even deeper than that. It's like going back to the factory where your car was made and doing stuff there instead of under the hood, which is option two. All that this tells you here is <clears throat> if your website is on GoDaddy, here's your instructions. If your website is in HostNet, here's your instructions. If your website is in uh, Register, here's your instructions. So it's telling you to put these special changes into your server. Here's your server. Here's your steps. Don't even bother with option three. This is very complex. I was on the list. You weren't on the list? Who do you have? Um, she has uh, NetFirms. NetFirm. Yep. So it's not even listed there. there it says other. Maybe oh, other will tell okay. you. And you see that after that, it takes you to a completely different website where it goes into a search so uh, this is this is complex don't even try number three <laughs> option three DNS changes or C name changes option three C name changes don't try this at home Google has the same sort of thing when we get to Google there'll be those three options copy and paste this code, which will be different than Bing because it's Google's version, or upload this file, which is a different file because it's Google, or do these C name changes, which again I wouldn't try. And, and Google actually has one more, which also is not that relevant to try. It's either going to be option one or two. Copy and paste your code, or upload this file. Yes? You copy and paste the code, can you do that just on your hard drive before you upload it to the server? <laughs> You can, but then it won't do anything. It has to be on the server. For yeah, yeah, you're going to upload all your folders and files to the server. Mm -hmm. But before you do that, you're, you're, you might be manipulating your website on your hard drive mm -hmm. before you yeah. send it. Sure. Is that okay? Yeah. As long as it's in the folders yeah eventually it has to be uploaded for this to be verified but in the meantime you can work on it on your own computer yeah so this is this is the point where then uh, I'm gonna stop the lecture for a little bit 
where uh, I'm going to give people a chance to do this. If they can't quite do it, they you can take notes and uh, and, and then follow along with with this eventually when you do have a website, or if you do uh, have think you have the ability to do it, try it. If you need a little help, I can come over and help you out. We can figure it out. And like I said, I've done this for this class for years, and when we get to this point, for like almost everyone, we can do it. The, we, I've, we've done it on Weebly and Wix and Squarespace and Dreamweaver and WordPress and everything, but it needs a little help sometimes. So we'll stop at this point. Um, you go ahead and try. Call me over if you need the help, and uh, we'll proceed after that.